While most people only know BioNTech because of the recent and still ongoing health crisis, they have actually been active and a leader in the field of experimental and future cures for diseases and viruses such as various forms of cancers, the flu and more. Their problem up to recently has mainly been the lack of funding they received which meant that their ability to develop and put these injections through human trials. But as you might have already guessed, this isn't a problem anymore as they have been the biggest supplier during this current health crisis. Just recently, BioNTech announced that they've started putting both a cancer and a HIV vaccine through human testing. Both of these are a first in the medical field and are going to pave the way for even more revolutionary treatments. And the most interesting fact about it is, how they're using many different technologies, including artificial intelligence, to produce these vaccines. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you what exactly BioNTech managed to create and is rigorously testing at the moment, how it is made or how it differs from previous attempts from its competitors, and finally, what this could mean for the future of the medical field and our society. In remarks at a downtown conference Thursday and Friday, the physicians behind the first licensed injection for the continuing health crisis said they are studying cancer drugs that might change treatment of a disease that has been a scourge for generations. Oslem Teresi, who co-founded German pharmaceutical business BioNTech with his husband Ur Sahin, said Friday at the Precision Medicine World Conference that the company is testing two treatments based on the same tool, mRNA technology, as is used in the company's extremely successful COVID-19 vaccine. One of the treatments is intended to be a generic cancer therapy for cancers with comparable genetic composition. The second is a therapy that matches individual tumor features to generate a medication that is specifically customized to the patient. Even malignancies of the same organ, such as the lungs, differ from patient to patient, according to Dr. Sahin. New customized therapies will be more expensive, but as automation improves, costs will decrease. They might inquire what parts of the toolbox can be reused once they have one. In advanced cancer care, they have a very robust immune response. They have a strong foundation. On Thursday, doctors, Teresi and Sahin, as well as Julie A. Johnson, Dean of the University of Florida College of Pharmacy, were recognized for their contributions. The Precision Medicine Institute is a joint venture between the University of Pittsburgh and the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. The conference was wrapping up on the same day that the director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention rejected an advisory panel's decision not to recommend the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine COVID-19 booster doses for frontline workers. The Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention advised booster injections for many Americans on Thursday, but exempted healthcare professionals, teachers, and others whose occupations put them at increased risk of infection. Allowing booster injections for healthcare and other frontline employees, according to CDC Director Rochelle Walensky, would best serve the nation's public health requirements. According to Donald M. Yeely, Chief Medical Officer at UPMC, BioNTech's mRNA breakthrough technique, which is based on 20 years of study, has developed a new pharmaceutical class of medicines for the treatment of disease, but only after decades of scientific uncertainty. In introducing Dr. Sahin and Teresi on Thursday, Dr. Yili stated, everyone felt it was a dead end. Dr. Teresi said precision medicine has been a focus for my work and very dear to our hearts, as he accepted the Institute's prize. Synthetic mRNA molecules, which serve as blueprints for the production of antiviral proteins, are injected into the arm and attracted to the lymph tissue of the patient. Dendritic cells utilize the blueprints to create antigens that attack the virus there. The beauty of BioNTech's technique is that the mRNA blueprints take precedence in the cell for antigen production. They've entered a new RNA age, and the newly generated antigens perform as expected. The average flu vaccination is 50 to 70 percent effective. BioNTech's COVID-19 vaccine is more than 90 percent effective. Over the last few years, there has been a lot of buzz about how artificial intelligence would revolutionize healthcare. However, translating the predictive potential of AI algorithms into research methodologies and clinical practice has proven difficult, leading to disappointment. Rather than becoming upset with AI and machine learning, I believe that the strategic and ethical application of artificial intelligence will be critical to the success of precision health research in the coming decade. 
A number of variables are combining to make AI more important to progress. One is that the sheer volume of data produced by electronic health records, medical device data, genomics, biospecimens, imaging, and digital health apps has outstripped human analysis skills. Because the volume of data and the number of data sources has grown exponentially, it's becoming increasingly difficult to extract additional value using traditional techniques of analysis. Artificial intelligence, when used correctly, may function as an intelligence layer atop these large and complicated datasets, assisting researchers in identifying patterns and correlations and drawing meaningful insights that might enhance healthcare treatment and operational efficiencies. Health systems, for example, are beginning to utilize AI technologies to analyze all admitted patients for the risk of readmission and provide suggestions for actions to reduce readmission risk. Second, there is an urgent and growing need to contain rising healthcare costs and deliver more accurate care. A one-size-fits-all healthcare approach is being recognized as needing to alter in order to provide more individualized treatment while also lowering costs. By analyzing the viability of protocol designs and automating data exchange across different platforms, AI has the potential to enhance clinical trial success rates. Predictive models of who will get sick before their symptoms develop are the subject of next-generation research initiatives. For example, scientists are developing algorithms to predict whether diabetic patients may develop specific problems. This sort of analytics technique can assist healthcare teams in detecting patient deterioration sooner perhaps reducing the number of expensive emergency room visits and hospitalizations. It can even be used to diagnose patients who have rare or odd diseases. Even those who perceive AI's potential benefit are aware of its hazards. Poorly constructed systems have the potential to misdiagnose. These blind spots will be included into software that has been educated on data sets that represent cultural prejudices. AI programs that learn as they go may have a slew of unexpected effects once they engage with unpredictable people. Many believe we will, but caution that implementation must be done carefully, taking into account not only AI's strengths but also its weaknesses, and drawing on a variety of perspectives from experts in fields other than medicine and computer science, such as ethics and philosophy, sociology, psychology, behavioral economics, and, one day, those trained in the nascent field of machine learning. Sensors on your smartphone may be used by the applications to figure out what's going on around you. An app may deduce that you're in a meeting based on your schedule, or conversing more casually based on ambient sounds detected by its microphone. It can identify how far you are from a gym or in double A meeting using your phone's GPS, or whether you are driving and should be left alone. Even worse is figuring out what to do when the AI knows more about you than you do. When your aim is to live more peacefully, heart rate sensors and a phone's microphone may notify an AI that you're stressed out. You, on the other hand, are preoccupied with a debate you're having, rather than the physiological repercussions or your long-term objectives. Is it feasible for the app to send a nudge when it's equally possible for you to take a deep breath or furiously throw your phone across the room? Working out such subtleties is tough, but necessary, according to Murphy, in order to create algorithms that are genuinely useful that know you well but are only as invasive as is necessary, and that, in the end, assist you in achieving your objectives. On all of these fronts, progress will need collaboration between government agencies and public-private academic collaborations on regulatory frameworks including transparency, proprietary models, and other ethical problems. For inclusion, we need to build open-source algorithm models that have been trained with the appropriate datasets. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality in the United States has launched an investigation into how frequently used algorithms are developed and verified, as well as whether there is any evidence that they are biased. Large public funding, as we've seen before, may undoubtedly inspire scientists and researchers to come up with innovative ideas. The NIH-funded Human Genome Project, which was completed 18 years ago, is now leading to advancements in DNA analysis. A comparable investment in precision medicine now, along with the confluence of variables I've outlined above, leads me to predict that the next decade will reshape our knowledge of clinical research and precision medicine, with ethical AI deployment at the forefront. So, what is your opinion on this revolutionary new kind of creating treatments for the world's most terrible diseases and viruses? Do you believe that this new technology will eventually be the only way in which new medicine and cures are invented or will it fall to the wayside to older or newer technology? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below.
I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.